What is going on guys? Greg Jenkins here from Monkey Pod Marketing. And earlier today, I was answering a question in the Keep user group on Facebook for my friend Gabby, uh, who had asked about setting up a, a, a reminder that loops every week for customers of his, um, but only runs for a set amount of time. And I recorded a quick Loom video uh, with a, a response, um, but I forgot to plug in my microphone or I had the wrong microphone selected, so there was no audio for it. Um, Gabby, being the smart guy that he is, was able to, to figure it out. Um, but I wanted to re-record the response um, with audio in case uh, anyone else has the same problem. So uh, just for context, the scenario here is like, let's say somebody buys a coaching program or a mentorship program or anything, right? And you wanna have reminders each week. Um, maybe it's about a meeting, maybe it's about filling out like an accountability survey, whatever, right? But you wanna have the same email go out each week. So you can build a looping campaign for that. Um, but um, that course or that mentorship program or what have you uh, might end after a certain amount of time. So you want those reminders to happen on repeat, but only for a six month window, let's say. That was the, the scenario in the original question. So uh, let's take a look in the software and I'll show you how you can build a looping campaign that only runs for a set amount of time. Okay, so what I've got here is a pretty standard looping campaign. Um, I actually do have a blog post that breaks down the, the structure and the dynamics of a looping campaign, but I'll give you a quick overview here. Um, so this particular campaign starts when somebody buys something, right? But you could easily use a web form or a landing page or a tag goal or any of the goals to trigger this, right? I just happen to choose a purchase for this particular example. Uh, once they are added to the campaign, uh, they're, they're going to join this looping process here. And the goal is for what happens in here to run on a recurring cycle. So uh, I've got it set up in this example as a weekly loop, but you could just as easily have it loop each month or at whatever cadence you know makes sense for your situation. So inside this sequence, um, you can see it starts by removing the loop tag. So we've got, hey, loop tag, remove. And the first time they come through here, they're not gonna have the loop tag. So there's nothing to remove, so that step would be skipped. But every time they come through in the future, we need to make sure we remove that loop tag so that we can reapply it. So the tag is sort of the key here to, to having the, the loop effect. And then what we put in between those two tag steps is sort of the process that will loop. So in this scenario, I've got a reminder email on a Monday and a reminder email on a Wednesday. And each week, I want the people who are in this coaching package to cycle through those reminders. Maybe it's uh, for regular calls that I'm hosting or um, an accountability reminder to fill out a, a weekly assessment, right? Something like that. Uh, and this process will change, right? So it could be um, every day of the week. It could be once a week. It could be multiple times a month, right? That's where you get to define what it is that you want to have loop. And then at the end of that, um, it's going to reapply that same loop tag. And what that does for us is it achieves this goal, uh, which pulls them out of that sequence, right? So this is listing for that loop tag. And then it also achieves this goal, which is listing for the same loop tag and drops them back in. So when that tag is applied, it does two things. First, it pulls them out. And then second, it uh, drops them back in, which starts that process all over again. The reason this works is because uh, exit goals process before entry goals. So when that tag is applied, we know that it's going to pull them out before it adds them back in, thus giving us the loop. Now, the modification we need to make here is we need to have this process only run for a set amount of time. The way I have it set up currently, this is going to loop in perpetuity, right? So for Gabby's situation, uh, we would add a an expiration of some sort. And there are two ways to do this, right? So if you know when you want it to expire, uh, we can build it right into this uh, sequence. But if you if you need it to count for a set amount of time before expiring, we're going to handle that in just a moment a slightly different way. So here's example number one. If you know we want it to expire on a specific calendar day, you can use a date timer right in here, um, and you can schedule when you want that conclusion tag to be applied. So I'm just going to use, I think I have one set up, conclusion tag, there we go. So you would just use the, the you know date timer and pick a calendar date. Uh, you could also use a field timer here if you wanted it to be like six months after their last payment date, right? Or six months after their last appointment date or, or what have you. So if you know you are scheduling it based off of a field on the contact record or off of a date on the calendar, you can set it up in this sequence. 
the reason that makes sense or the reason that it works that way is because each time they loop through, this date isn't going to change. So as long as they are in here at that date and time, it's going to run this action. And then all we need to do is add the conclusion tag here, conclusion tag. Uh, and that would that would serve as our expiration. So it would loop, it would loop, it would loop, and then on this day and on that time, it would apply the conclusion tag, which stops it. Uh, but in Gabby's scenario, he needed it to loop for six months. And the problem is we can't use a delay timer here. Uh, it's going to try to, yep, there we go. We can't use a delay timer here because each time it loops through, this delay timer would continue uh, or would restart, right? It would try to restart that six-month window. So if you do need a, um, a rolling window, an evergreen timeline for expiration, uh, what you can do is actually build that into a separate sequence. So six-month timer. Um, and then you can just add uh, a decision diamond up front. You don't actually need any rules in here. You don't need to configure any rules because we do want contacts to go into both of these. Uh, and then all we need in this sequence is the six month delay. So let's set that to six months and we can run this at any day, at any time, save, and we will apply the conclusion tag. So conclusion tag, there we go. Um, and then there's one more change here. So instead of having, if I attach this here, right, um, this would that, that that structure actually wouldn't work because uh, when the loop tag is applied, it would also stop this sequence. Okay, so we need to remove the conclusion tag from here, and we need to actually break that out until it's into its own goal method. So this is conclusion tag. Uh, and it's listening for that conclusion tag. There we have it. There, there we go. And then we can connect that. So this is the, the actual final structure that we need, right? Uh, this is the uh, looping process on its own. And then this is the six month expiration window. So what happens is when somebody you know joins this process, they're gonna go into both of these sequences simultaneously. This top one is going to loop on repeat uh, as that tag is removed and reapplied over and over. And then this bottom one is going to wait those six months and apply the conclusion tag, which will achieve this goal and stop the entire process. Okay, guys, that is it. That's how you can set up a looping campaign with a built-in expiration so it only runs for a set amount of time. Um, feel free to uh, leave a comment if you have any questions or if you liked this video, you can like this video um, or share it with someone who it could serve. That's it, guys. Take care.